What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're going to be looking at this product from Gerber. This is the Gerber Gator Premium Fixed Blade in the drop point version. It's going to run you about $105, $110 depending on where you pick it up. And I saw them advertising this on their social media outlets and so I contacted somebody I know over at Gerber and said, hey, why don't you send one along and we'll review it. He said, sure, and so here it is. It is full tang. It's obviously a fixed blade. It has a drop point. It is S30V steel, so it's going to have nice edge retention and also it's going to resist corrosion. It does have that nice rubberized grip there. You can see the lanyard hole uh, down at the end of it as well. And it is um, made in the U.S. as well as the sheath also being made in the U.S. So cool product. Let's uh, zoom in, take a look at it, and then we'll take it out and use it. Here's a look at it in hand, and let me just get a grip on it. You can see kind of how your hand naturally falls. It is really comfortable. Um, this, there's a nice swell here, and I find that just kind of makes your hand want to lock in like this. You do have this big finger guard, which is nice. You got some jimping up top. It says Gerber. Let me see, get it so you can see it there. Uh, there you go, a little bit Gerber on the blade, and then the Gerber logo there. On the back side, you can see made in USA, Portland, Oregon, and then it has the Gerber logo there. Looking at the um, the Gator grip, it is rubberized, so it gives you nice texture. This is a little bit harder up here, and then it's kind of softer rubber down here. You can see you do have the lanyard hole down there. It is full tang, and I, I mean you could call it a pommel. I call I would call it the base of a knife. I wouldn't use this for any smashing or or breaking objects like that. It's just not made for that. It's kind of a a handsome blade to be used out in the outdoors, but it's not going to be like a hardcore, you know, like survival knife, uh, at least in my opinion. Nice looking blade though, nice looking blade. Let's look at the sheath now, quickly. And I would say the sheath is good. I don't think it's fantastic, but it's good. So you have leather, you got your snaps here, you got your two, um, your two grommets there. It does say Gerber, and then let me open this up real quick. Down inside, let me get some light on it basically have this plastic liner and it's it's okay it's nothing spectacular um, the uh, the sheath is made in the USA as you can see it's decent material it's uh, it's nothing I would write home about I definitely think the knife is actually nicer than the sheath when you put the knife into the sheath it does lock in as far as you know you carrying it put it on your belt no big deal but you can see here there is going to be some movement and when you push this out it does come out not a ton, but a little bit. I mean, you could start to see the serial numbers down in there. Um, but again, this I, this knife is not going to be made for you know putting on your belt and then running through the woods for you know six hours. If you're hiking out to a spot where you're going to be hunting or you're going out to the woods on a camping trip and you put this on your belt, I don't think it's going to be a major uh, a major issue as far as you know. I don't think you're going to lose the knife or it's going to fall off or anything like that. So uh, that's what it looks like in the sheath. And now let's take it outside and start using it. We're out in the field now, continuing our review of the Gerber Gator. And one of the main things people ask questions about when it comes to, um, you know, wilderness survival, camping, bushcraft knives, one of the tests they'd like to see is the batoning test. I'm not going to baton with this knife. It could do some light batoning, most likely. I don't think there'd be any problem with it. The S30V steel is good and solid, keeps a nice edge. But it's got a four inch blade, so it's not very big. And it's generally not built to be uh, a knife used in that capacity. You could if you had to, but I'm not going to do that type of testing today. Um, this is definitely geared toward being a hunting knife or a small camping knife, but I want to show that it's useful in other applications and the test we'll put it through today is actually to uh, build a frog gig. So, you know, a long pole with four points at the end so you can hunt for frogs. Now there is a pond here, there's lots of frogs around. One thing that you'll find out when you go gigging is that um, if you're in an area that's pretty wild and the frogs aren't used to hearing people or seeing people, they're going to jump in the water a lot earlier than you would suspect. And so uh, the longer the gig you have, the easier it is to, uh, to tag those frogs and to, uh, and to have some dinner or lunch or whatever it is. So certainly check your regulations in your area. And what I'll do today is build the gig and then I'll put a link down below to the video that I'm going to be actually using the gig in, which is I'll be heading out in a couple days to do a, uh, a survival bushcraft overnight. And uh, I'll take the gig with me and see if I can get, get some, uh, some frogs for dinner on that trip. So today we'll build it and that video will actually test it out. But let's show you what the Gerber Gator looks like in use. You know, part of the dance of doing stuff in the woods, bushcrafting, wilderness survival, is that there's those hard skills that you need to learn and be comfortable with in the woods. But there's also this art, this like dance that you gotta be able to do with nature to say, okay, I want this type of thing, but if there isn't that type of wood around or that type of food around, what are ways I can improvise, problem solve, and and still stay alive or you know still get out there and have some some fun in the woods with my bushcrafting skills so i was working along the edge here you can see kind of out behind me where it gets lighter that's the edge of the pond and so lots of pine here there's some birch 
um, but I don't want to use pine necessarily for a gig because it's such a soft wood. Um, so I'm looking for something that's a little bit stronger, maple I'd prefer, and I know ma maple's around here. So I had to go in to the woods a bit to actually find a, uh, find a piece of maple and I actually found a really nice piece that was already dead, didn't have to cut down a live sapling. If you do cut down a live sapling, you're probably going to have to make the gig and then fire harden it, which basically means um, put the ends you know, kind of on the edge of the fire. You don't want to burn them or kind of totally roast them, but it uh, gets the moisture out so they become very, uh, very hard and so they're not going to bend or snap on you when you're actually using the gig. One thing you'll see is that I have a very long piece here. Let me look. It's, I mean, it's probably 13 feet, 12 feet. Um, my preference is get a longer piece of wood, make your gig, and then if you have to cut off, you know, the the non-pointed end eventually to get it to be more manageable, better that than having a gig that is too short. You put all the time and effort into make it, and then you're like, uh, okay, now I wish it was two feet longer, but I can't necessarily easily add wood to it. It's easier to take some wood off. So let me show you what this piece of wood looks like, and then we'll get into actually. Uh, breaking it apart and using it, putting it together as a gig. All right, so here's my gig. It's a little busted up here at the end, so I'm gonna cut that section off, but I'll show you how long it is here from end to end. So quite big. This end is, you know, it's all busted up here at the end too. So I'll clean that up, but uh, you know, right now it's definitely not very manageable as a gig, but um, again, I'm gonna do some work on it and then we'll decide how long we want it and always better to have more length than less length. So let's zoom in on the end and we'll show you the process actually making the point for the gig. The first thing we're going to do is just basically clear off from this section up. We're just going to take that whole section off just because this is, it's already uh, broken in half and I'd like to have the full, um, you know, circumference of the, um, of the piece of wood. So I'm going to do that just by beaver chewing through this and we'll see how the knife works. Essentially, this is a, uh, I did this in another video and somebody sent me a message which is like, I've never seen that method before, but you know, you just kind of work your way around the edge. The advantage of this is that um, you don't have to get the whole way through as long as you get the 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 point here where it's going to snap off weak enough eventually you can just break it over your knee and or snap it off with your hands so because it's maple this wood is pretty hard you're not just working into pine or birch or something like that so i'm gonna have to go through a little bit deeper than i normally would if i was beaver chewing something So let me put the knife in the sheath here. I want to see if we can just snap this off here. Yep. All right. So there's my end, and you can actually see why people would call it beaver chewing. I mean, you work your way around, but even at the end, it does look like what the top of a stump looks like when you're done. Uh, when a beaver is done taking down a tree. So what we're going to do now is take the axe or the um, the knife, and we'll baton this way, and we'll baton this way, and then we have to uh, basically separate those and make sure that our points are really sharp. Here's a little trick for batoning something that's really long. So if it's too long to actually kind of lean over top of it and baton in a normal fashion, what you can do is you can wedge it in against uh, you know, the base of a tree or a rock or something. And now I can baton this end, which is up closer to the camera, much more easily because this whole, the other end isn't moving all around. It's really wedged in solidly. Okay, so we'll do the vertical batoning first and then the horizontal one second. And um, you wanna be, make sure that they're pretty much 90 degrees to each other. So you have four even sized, uh, even sized prongs or points on your uh, on your gig and you want to be gentle in doing it you don't want to whack it and then all of a sudden have the crack go all the way down here because then uh, it's going to make your uh, make your gig a bit weaker so i i kind of start in with this and then sometimes i'll even just use the palm of my or the um yeah the palm of my hand to keep it going so i can see it splitting already and the split right now based on what i've done has gone down to here and I could see it starting to turn so I want to be careful that I um, try to angle the uh, the blade away a little bit and then also if I see it starting to get you know too far onto this side as far as the split I'm just gonna stop either I can cut it off and try again or I can just have you know that be the length of my uh, the tip of my um, my gig All right, so that's that's about right. The split is down to about here now. So that's probably eight, 10 inches down to here, but we'll take this out. And um, I don't want to turn this sideways just because it's gonna fall back this way um, based on where the base is. So I'm just gonna put this 90 degrees to where the first split is and then start coming in like this. I've also got a pretty light baton here. 
So that um, saves me from accidentally hitting too hard with the heavy baton and really splitting it further or more aggressively than I want to. So I'm just watching where the split is going. So I got one split here and then the second one's down to about here now. Still going okay, just gonna flip my baton over a little bit. All right, so that's pretty good. And it's always a roll of the dice once you get toward the end, like how far am I gonna go before it just splits and busts apart. But uh, let me show you real quick. I'll leave the knife in there just for kicks. So that's what that looks like. You got you know, the split this way and the split this way. Fortunately, that was just an extra scrap piece of wood there. But um, yeah, so now what you can do is you can put your, um, your spacers in now or you can shave off all this stuff, make your prongs, make your barbs, whatever, and then, uh, and then put the spacers in. I'm gonna start just by clearing off some of this bark with the, uh, with the Gerber Gator. So I can tell you, as soon as I start doing this with the knife, that these are the type of tasks this, uh, this knife is gonna excel at. Some of that more aggressive use, that was light batoning, so I wouldn't call that aggressive by any means, but these, some of this gentler, you know, carving, finer use with that big belly, you know, doing some skinning and gutting and things like that. That's what this knife is really gonna excel at. So you can see this comes off quite, quite easily with the knife. Cleaning the whole thing up here. And the purpose of getting the, the bark off when it comes to the actual gig is that um, if you are gonna fire harden it, you wanna have that under portion, that, that heartwood of the, uh, of the wood exposed. And then also it just makes the whole thing neater. It's easier to get a barb in. You don't have little pieces falling off the whole time. So you can see I'm, I'm starting to clean that up quite nicely. So I went and got a small maple branch and these, this is gonna be used to cut into basically two small pieces, probably just about maybe three, four inches long that will be used for the spacers between the uh, between the prongs. So let me just get some of these little smaller branches off with my gator. And then what I can do is just cut into this. And so now I've got this section. And I, you know, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll strip all the bark off. Other times I'll just, you know, basically have the right size spacer, cut it and leave the bark on. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, Based on the size, I'm probably gonna go about, I don't know, maybe three and a half inches for each one. And so I'll cut in like this. And I just snap that off. And I've just pulled off some of the bark anyhow there. So that's one, and then I'll take the other one. You can match it up. And then do the same thing with this one. All right, so now I got my two little spacers here and I wanna save this other piece. Let me just put the knife away here in the sheath for a minute. I wanna save this other piece in case I break this or the spacers are too big and I need something a little bit thinner. Now I've got this piece to, uh, to replace these in case they don't work. So here we've got the end of my gig. You can see I've cleaned all the bark off and now we're just gonna take the spacers and we're gonna slide one through this way. And as, as it's going, you wanna listen because if you start to hear a cracking, you gotta say, okay, I don't wanna push too much further. So it's got a little bit of a cracking sound. So I'm gonna push a little bit more. That's probably about as far as I'm gonna go. And then we're gonna do another one this way. And obviously this second one can only go as far as the first one has gone. So that's, that's what that looks like. Now this is, these are obviously huge. They're not pointed yet. So I'm gonna shave these down, make them smaller. And we'll see if I can get a little, you know, some, some barbs in there. And then we'll show you what that looks like. Here's where we're at so far. You can see I've sharpened them up quite a bit. I haven't sharpened them all the way, you know, down to the bottom of the, um, of where they split apart. But I basically pushed the, um, the spacers down to where I had shaved off the bark and then, um, I'm basically sharpening these up. And right now they are, I mean, they are quite pointy. If I hit a frog with that, I would definitely catch it. One thing I found out with the, with the uh, Gerber Gator is that, especially as I'm doing some of this finer work, I don't want to go too aggressively because then I might snap the point off. So I'm really using that, just that front, you know, maybe inch of the, uh, of the blade up there 
to get some of the some of that finer work and sharpening there. You can be a little bit more aggressive down here at the bottom, but you know if you're you're going gigging, you're probably not going to get the frog to slide all the way up to here. You're probably going to get the frog about this far in, and then you want to get it out of the water, put it out of its misery, and then uh, you know continue on with your with your hunting of frogs. So this is how I've been using the knife to do this. It is it is pretty awkward even if you flip the whole thing the other way so the points are coming at you and you know you're uh, you're pushing basically back this way because you flipped it around. It's still a little bit tough because you got so little space in here. So work uh, slowly, don't work too aggressively. And then the other thing to be aware of is especially with a harder wood like maple, you don't want to slip off and stab yourself in the leg. So make sure you're cutting away. If you're cutting down, you got your leg out of the way. I'm cutting out like this, so my knife is going to go out, you know, that off that end of the camera. So I'm, I'm generally pretty safe as far as, you know, hot, cutting myself or hurting myself. But this is what I've been doing. And you can see, you know, when you push, you push a little bit harder, you start to have a little bit of flex. So you got to be careful. Not to go, not to go too aggressively. We'll do this a little bit more, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Let's take a quick look at the gig. Here it is. Quite sharp on the points. I haven't put any barbs in there. Um, it's just a lot of work to do that, and I think this is going to probably work just fine. Um, so what we'll do, as I mentioned earlier, I'll put a link down below, and you can click, and I'll show you what some nighttime gigging looks like. Now. It's hard to say I may go out and and um, you know depending on the day there's a lot of frogs there's no frogs so we'll see how it goes but check out that link down below as far as the Gerber gator I'll say a couple things um, first I did test it with a fire steel and let me just show you that quickly here's um, what it looks like to use this fire steel this is one of the survivor fire steels um, here's their here's their striker with it so you can see what that looks like here's the Rat 7 with it. And then here's the Gerber Gator. So I'm getting a tiny bit of spark, but just by the fact that this is not um it's not a very steep edge, it's really rounded on the top there. So it's you know, you know, as far as throwing a throwing a spark off a of fire steel, it, you could probably do it, you could definitely do it with the blade if you had to, but not nobody really wants to do that. Um, here's what I'll tell you about the knife though. Comfortable to use. I did like this this front little inch here, you know, of the blade to do that little fine work that I was doing. And um, the the handle was comfortable. I found it actually a little bit more comfortable with the gloves off than with the gloves on, but either way it was, was quite good. Um, we do have a lanyard hole here, so if you put a lanyard on there you could, you know, use it more aggressively in some chopping like that. I get this against four, four inch blade though, probably not going to be doing a ton of chopping, not super thick. Um, but I think it's a handsome blade. And I could see why this was geared toward hunters and just people in the outdoors, camping, things like that. So, uh, you guys hear this chipmunk over here? My gosh. Wish I had something to just throw to scare him away. But anyhow, um, the, the handle is actually, it's like, um, it's, in, it's an injected, uh, the way they, they, they used to make handles, a lot of rubber handles were basically like an overmold. They would pressurize them and then eventually they'd peel off. Gerber came up with something uh, years ago that basically injected the rubber and so um, it's just going to last longer. That's kind of the deal with all their gator lines like this, the folding ones, the, gut, the one with the gut hook. Uh, but if you're looking for a um, camping knife, a hunting knife, something with a nice belly like this, S30V steel, that's a nice steel. You know, that's one of my favorites. Um, that's not going to run you a ton of money, but nicer than, you know, an 8CR, 13MOV, those types of things. Um, this could be this could be a really nice knife for you, and what I'll do is, uh, you know, I'll test this out more, and in the future I'll let you know what I what I think of it. But just compare it real quick here to the Rat Seven, which I've been reviewing recently. I mean, size wise, it's not even closer. I and mean, the Rat Seven is just a really big blade, but this is going to be a you know closer to a one tool option if you believe in that. Um, this is a big hefty knife. This is definitely something you put on your side and then you've got an axe with you, you've got a saw with you, some other options. But uh, yeah, I saw them talking about this on their social media and thought that'd be cool to check it out and it's been fun to use. It's been comfortable. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit, you know, when it comes to having, you know, your, your finger guard and then your, your one, basically your finger groove there and then the rest are going to fall in there. So that's how it's used, but if you want to try different grips, 
it can be a little weird like a reverse grip for this is gonna be a little strange probably not gonna use a reverse grip on this that much but um but still I did find it I found it comfortable and the nice thing about the rubber handle is that it's gonna avoid getting all kinds of junk on it if you had wood and you got you know you're gutting something or cleaning some sort of animal you're gonna get all kinds of junk in your uh, in your handle not the case with this with this knife so so yeah definitely camping hunting check it out if you're interested in that and uh, check out the link below and you'll see what this this knife was able to make as far as the gig here and we'll see how we do when we go uh, frog gigging with that so thanks as always for checking out our videos here on YouTube please subscribe to everyday tactical vids on YouTube if you haven't done so already like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram and Tumblr as well. Gerber Gator. Later.